Let's go to Carlo in Nevada. Welcome to About Health. Hello. 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 My name is Carter. Oh, Carter. I'm sorry. I couldn't hear it good. Well. Oh, good. You know, many of us who want to give to Haiti have the problem of knowing how to give, and I don't mean money. Sometimes it's just resources. In my case, it's a concept. We know that that earthquake was severe. We know that the roads are down. We know that they're going to have to rebuild those roads in order to get infrastructure throughout Haiti built because trucks cannot traverse in many cases those roads. Mm -hmm. My concept that I'd like to offer, it's, I'm placing it in the public domain for Haiti and any country, including ours, as the, is that as they rebuild those roads, that they place very inexpensive in today's world, and they'll become less expensive, photovoltaic material on both sides of that road, mm -hmm. meaning in the median strips and on the roadbed, so that their electricity is made for the people. That sun belongs to us. Ah. And if we place photovoltaic materials on our roadbeds, which typically have rights of way that are already paid, infrastructure that's already paid for, mm -hmm. you place photovoltaic materials on the road, collect the sun, plug into the electrical infrastructure that either exists or will exist after this earthquake, mm -hmm. and our Haitian brothers and sisters have sustainable uh, electricity, and they're going to need that to become, uh, to, to, to make their future better. All and right. I just offer that. Okay. I'd like to know where to send such an, an initiative. For example, I was thinking of Wycliffe's organization, but... I want to. I want to real address something. If I could get it through Ms. Newman, that would be a practical, simple, that kind of thing. If she has any ideas where that's concerned, or if you do, as the host of the show, I'd love to know about that. Well, I, I certainly. Uh, we won't give out any addresses here, but if you want to talk to her, but go ahead. I, I would certainly tell you to definitely contact Wycliffe's organization yeah, because I, they do work like that within Haiti. But one of the things I also want to mention is that, you know, um, you all you saw pictures of, of uh, Port-au-Prince. That city was devastated, but when you go outside of the main city, the roads are actually not that bad in the countryside. Of course, the uh, locality where the earthquake hit in that, in that area, they're devastated, but other parts of the country, people are getting to and from the major city. So, Port-au-Prince is, is huge as well as the epicenter, but uh, certainly Wycliffe's organization, um, uh, Yelly.org, would be the one to help facilitate that. And like I said, we have our, our email address if you want to call me after the show or yeah. email me. Okay. Um, and I do want to thank you for that suggestion. I love the idea that we're out there thinking about ways. Now, the, the problem that I have, though, is if people are not eating... Um, they're not going to be able to put photovoltaic anything anywhere. So it's important that we do do that, though. I like the idea of maybe some private entity or nonprofit entity here in the United States saying, we'll fund this, we'll go and do this and help them learn how to do this so that they can do it themselves and then it becomes sustainable. And it's not just an opportunity um, for some entrepreneur here. So uh, thank you for the ideas. Keep them coming. We're still looking for the congressperson that we need to uh, lobby to get those funds if you have any ideas or information about that out there, you can call us at 1-800-958-9008 or 510-848-4425. Dr. Newman? So Newman? One, one of the things that, that came to mind is, you know, we all see the big box stores, um, Home Depot, mm -hmm. Lowe's, and a lot of the stuff that they have at those facilities and a lot of their manpower, they have the ability to help Haiti rebuild in a, in a big way. But we need them to start realizing that they need to take, a, they need to make a special effort. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be easy for anybody to do this. But, you know, all of us shop at Home Depot, all of us shop in Lowe's. Why can't we ask them to start the process of getting the construction moving in that country? Mm -hmm. As well as you go to Walgreens, Rite Aid, and, and all those places, you can ask, you can ask your individual store, have, what are you, what is your store doing to help 
mm-hmm. the Haitian people because medicines is is really a big issue. And it sounds like organization is the big thing. I mean, even if we had a hundred people here ready now to give services, how would that happen logistically? Where would they stay? Who would they contact? So all those things still need to be done. But I like the idea now of um, asking the big box stores. What about the unions? They have a lot of laid off workers. They have training money maybe left over. Maybe they can use some of that to support um, a cadre of construction workers to go over to Haiti and, and, and give their services for six months or something like that. You know, you're absolutely right, Joe. I remember back in January when all this happened, you know, there were people willing, ready to just go over there. But what didn't happen was the organization yeah. so that people weren't, because a lot of my colleagues went over there and some of them were pissed off because they were sitting around and doing nothing, nothing. because yeah. they were in a in an area that didn't have the people who needed their yeah, help. The infrastructure. Just like they had all the nurses sign up on the website. A lot of them didn't get called to go over, but right. we need organization. And to have that done on a realistic level, you got to have an agency that's that's been able to handle this. USI, USAID, you know, which is the United States component that's in charge in Haiti, is doing a, a good job, but they ha- I have issues with all the things that they do, but we need some kind of organization. And while I'm not saying USAID is the answer to everything, we need an, a, a, a large organization that has the experience of moving manpower. Mm-hmm. And we need commitments. We need like rolling commitments of people who are willing to give of their time to go spend some time in the country and work when the call is made. Mm-hmm. But that... You know, that's, that's a huge undertaking. I know. You know what? I would love to see Wycliffe and, and people with star, stars with money um, get together and support um, a group of Haitians to go back to Haiti. Because who better, you know, in terms of language and logistics and um, relationships and all, the people who have migrated to the United States who are Haitians, if they could be helped and supported and organized to go to Haiti and help, I think that would be a great thing. Too. Well, one of, the, one of the partner organizations that we work with is a med- Medical Society of Haitian Americans out of New York City, which mm-hmm. is my hometown, okay. and uh, and they've been they've been going they've been there since before the earthquake. But since the earthquake, they have they've been there almost every at least for the first three months they were there the entire time, and then they keep sending teams over. So there are groups on the East Coast mm-hmm. who are doing this on a regular basis, and certainly I can put people in contact with them. Um, but it's like people who are Haitians. One of the things that I like what Joy brought up, which I always have have support is that we have to make sure that whatever's going on we ask the haitian people first yeah we, they need to be part of the solution absolutely. they have to be part of the solution yes. and we can't think that we can run over right. and take over that's not what we're doing right. we are stepping together believe in sustainable efforts and right. we believe in the people who are being affected by this need to be at the forefront of the decision making process right. and that's part of the issue too because um it's, let's say in this country let's say this devastating thing happened in sweden <laughs> Let's just imagine it right. for a second. So there would be Swedish immigrants here and people from all over the world who who would just, you know, do whatever. But there is, it's a different expectation because in Sweden they have infrastructure, they have resources, they have wealth outside of the country and people can come and help them. So we're talking about a country who literally was having problems feeding itself before the earthquake. So to now be to go around and ask them to rebuild themselves, yeah. that whole bootstrap thing, pull yourself up, it doesn't work. So I agree with you. We can't do it for the Haitian people, but we certainly we can do it in concert and by supporting their desires and their needs and giving them the power to make their decisions. But we just need to give them the resources because they don't have it. Exactly. Their trees are gone. Exactly. And, <laughs> and look at look what look at uh, the the Gulf. Look yeah. at Mississippi. And yeah. Cont- now here it was in the United States. Yeah. Which we had the infrastructure, and yeah. things aren't still, still the way they right. should be. You're right. So you know, we are committed to a ten to twenty year effort because it's going to take at least that long to get where we need to be. But you know, we need we need other people to help us. Yeah, we, we can't do it alone. All right, this is Joy Moore. We're on about health. We're talking with Dr. Kenya Newman. Um, we're talking about Haiti, how we can fix it. L- l- not, uh, keep it on the front burner too, because that might that's my other issue, is that um, this is a long term effort. We're not talking about six months a year. We're talking about ten years of rebuilding. Look at the devastation in the Alaska uh, uh, Prince William Sound. We are still dealing with this twenty five, twenty years later. So any of these 
natural disasters or unnatural, because that was not unnatural, uh, devastating to the earth, we need to work on for a long time. So this is a long-term view. We're looking for solutions. We're getting your, taking your phone calls at 1-800-958-9008. There's several lines open. And 510-848-4425. Let's go to Daniel in Oakland. Welcome to About Health. And thanks you for your patience, Daniel. Oh, uh, no problem, Joy. Um, and hello, uh, Dr. Newman. Uh, the first thing that I would like to say is that I applaud, Dr. Newman, your bringing forth. It was actually going to be part of my comments, but uh, you beat me to the punch. The concept that when aid in any form to any uh, individual uh country it's very very important to not presume that we have the answers but rather to go in with an attitude that is okay we want to help but we need to know from you the people who live here how can we best help you mm -hmm. i think that's exactly. you know an extraordinarily important insight secondly uh, you mentioned usaid and uh, that's uh, an organization with which I have a whole lot of issues. You may be familiar with Michael Corton's book, uh, David Corton's book, I'm sorry, When Corporations Rule the World, and he used to be the uh, head of USAID, mm -hmm. the United States Agency for International Development. Um, however, I do know that back in the spring here at KPFA, we did a special fundraising yes. day and uh, if memory serves me correctly, it was only two organizations that we took um, pledges to, you know, for money to go to. One was Haitian Paul Relief. Um, yeah, wasn't one of them Paul Farmer's uh, organization? Right. Partners in Health? Partners in Health, right. yes. And then I believe the other one was either Save the Children or Doctors Without Borders, both of them. Excellent. No, it, it, it was several organizations. Um well, but, but, I could be wrong. My understanding yeah. was just those two um, that we were, because okay. they had such a good track history. But I, I might be wrong. Okay. Okay. But, but here is, is my point, is that it is, it is essential that this country's people finds a way to take back our government because we are not in control you're right you're right about that that's a bigger topic than this show though but right. no i, I <laughs> thank but, you but as it relates to this is that you know the situation with you know the uh the former prime minister of haiti who's been exiled oh aristide aristide yes president aristide there is a is a perfect example all right it is because of the, the united states well the government yeah. Um, uh, that Aristide is not there to help consolidate uh, the various different groups that would have a good understanding of what is needed. Oh, absolutely. That goes back to the very beginning of the conversation when I pointed out, and I just want to remind people, that the history of Haiti has been dictated by the United States. We have interfered. The, 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 the history of France's interference, Spain's interference, and the United States' interference means that these three countries and, and the rest of the world owes Haiti the respect and the dignity of helping them rebuild after this devastating earthquake. I agree with you totally, Daniel, and thank you for that call. Call. Let's take another call. Let's go to Vilia and Camino. Welcome to About Hell. Hi. Thanks for waiting. Oh, not a problem. Um, I've been waiting since January 12th to um, help the Haitian people. And what I have done since that day is made rosaries. Oh. I have about 140 completed, ready to send. Mm. And there is where my problem comes in. I don't know anybody from Haiti. Oh. I need, I've written a letter to the people that will be getting one, and I have a prayer card of how to pray the rosary, but I need to meet a Haitian person that can translate it into 
Haitian into the language that they speak so that they'll be able to understand it. Okay. I've spoke to two of the consulates, one in Miami and one in Chicago, and I talked to Marie Helena, and she said that if I translated it on the computer, the people would not understand it. Uh. And so the, I decided that wasn't an option. They need to be able to mm -hmm. understand it. Mm -hmm. Right, the language is Creole, although they do speak uh, French in the country, but the language of Creole is spoken amongst the people. The children who go to school uh, learn French, and they also learn Spanish when they get to high school. So certainly, if you contact my organization, we can certainly give you some uh, contacts within Haiti and within the United States who will be willing to help you with that, with your mission. Okay. And thank, thank you for sharing that with us.